Keats's poems, letters, and the love story with Fanny Braun make Keats so special and so available to contemporary generations of readers. He died at 25, more beloved on earth than most of us will ever be. The strong bond of love between the two is to be found elsewhere in English literature, e.g. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, just to mention a few, and it is the kind of love that all of us long for. It is an all-consuming passion that can stupefy you, stun your senses, suspend time and space. It is the strongest of emotions, so strong that it causes both pleasure and pain. All this can be found in Keats's love letters and in the poems written during his close relationship with Fanny. They were completely in love, but many obstacles stood in their way. His poor financial standing prevented him from proposing. His friend Charles Brown believed Fanny represented a potential danger to John's career. Charles did not consider Fanny John's equal, John's poor health. Yet, their love did not relent. When in the summer of 1819 Brown and Keats left Hampstead for a writing retreat on the Isle of Wight, Keats and Fanny were separated and he wrote. Ask yourself my love whether you are not very cruel to have so entrammeled, limited, me, so destroyed my freedom, I almost wish we were butterflies and lived but three summer days. Three such days with you I could fill with more delight than fifty common years could ever contain. O oh, to a nightingale. My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains. My sense, as though of hemlock I have drunk. Or emptied some dull opiate to the drains. One minute passed, and lethe wards had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thy happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot, of beech and green, and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease, oh for a draught of vintage, that hath been, Called a long age in the deep delved earth. Tasting of flora and the country green. Dance, and proven cow song, and sunburnt mirth. Oh for a beaker full of the warm south. Full of the true, the blushful hippocrene. With beaded bubbles winking at the brim. And purple stained mouth. That I might drink, and leave the world unseen. And with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget. What thou among the leaves hast never known. The weariness, the fever, and the fret. Here, where men sit and hear each other groan. Where palsy shakes a few. Sad, last grey hairs. Where youth grows pale, and spectre thin, and dies. Where but to think is to be full of sorrow. And leaden-eyed despairs. Where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes. Or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away. Away. For I will fly to thee. Not charioted by Bacchus and his pards. But on the viewless wings of poesy. Though the dull brain perplexes and retards. Already with thee. Tender is the night. And haply the queen moon is on her throne. Clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light. Save what from heaven is with the breezes blown. 
through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs. But, in embalmed darkness, guess each sweet, wherewith the seasonable month endows. The grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild. White hawthorn, and the pastoral eglantine. Fast fading violets covered up in leaves. And mid May's eldest child. The coming musk rose, full of dewy wine. The murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. Darkling I listen, and for many a time. I have been half in love with easeful death. Called him soft names in many amused rhyme. To take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die. To cease upon the midnight with no pain. While thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad. In such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain. To thy high requiem become a sod. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird. No hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard. In ancient days by emperor and clown. Perhaps the selfsame song that found a path. Through the sad heart of Ruth, when, sick for home. She stood in tears amid the alien corn. The same that oft times earth. Charmed magic casements, opening on the foam. Of perilous seas, in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn. The very word is like a bell. To tell me back from thee to my soul self. Adieu. The fancy cannot cheat so well. As she is fain to do, deceiving elf. Adieu. Adieu. Thy plaintive anthem fades. Past the near meadows, over the still stream. Up the hillside, and now tis buried deep. In the next valley glades. Was it a vision, or a waking dream? Fled is that music, do I wake or sleep? John Keats Sonnet 2 2 Had I a man's fair form, then might my sighs Be echoed swiftly through that ivory shell Thine ear, and find thy gentle heart, so well would passion arm me for the enterprise? But ah! I am no knight whose foeman dies. No cuirass glistens on my bosom swell. I am no happy shepherd of the dell. Whose lips have trembled with a maiden's eyes. Yet must I dote upon thee, call thee sweet. Sweeter by far than Hybla's honeyed roses. When steeped in dew rich to intoxication. Ah! I will taste that dew, for me tis meat. And when the moon her pallid face discloses. I'll gather some by spells, an incantation. John Keats Song I had a dove. I had a dove, and the sweet dove died. And I have thought it died of grieving. Oh, what could it grieve for? Its feet were tied. With a single thread of my own hands weaving. Sweet little red feet, why should you die? Why should you leave me, sweet bird, why? You lived alone in the forest tree. Why, pretty thing? 
Would you not live with me? I kissed you oft and gave you white peas. Why not live sweetly, as in the green trees? John Keats Sonnet, oh! How I love, on a fair summer's eve. Oh! How I love, on a fair summer's eve. When streams of light pour down the golden west. And on the balmy zephyr's tranquil rest. The silver clouds, far far away to leave. All meaner thoughts, and take a sweet reprieve. From little cares, to find, with easy quest. A fragrant wild, with nature's beauty dressed. And there into delight my soul deceive. There warm my breast with patriotic law. Musing on Milton's fate on Sydney's beer. Till their stern forms before my mind arise. Perhaps on wing of poesy upsoar. Full often dropping a delicious tear. When some melodious sorrow spells mine eyes. John Keats When I have fears that I may cease to be. When I have fears that I may cease to be. Before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain. Before high pill and grave, D. Burks, in Sharrick's R.Y. Hold like rich garners the full ripened grain. When I behold, upon the night's starred face. Huge cloudy symbols of a high romance. And feel that I may never live to trace. Their shadows, with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel, fair creature of an hour. That I shall never look upon thee more. Never have relish in the fairy power. Of unreflecting love, then on the shore. Of the wide world I stand alone, and think. Till love and fame to nothingness do sink. John Keats To Fanny Brown, the 11th of October, 1819 College Street My sweet girl I am living today in yesterday. I was in a complete F.A.S. signation all day. I feel myself at your mercy. Write me ever so few lines and tell you, for me, you will never forever be less kind to me than yesterday. You dazzled me. There is nothing in the world so bright and delicate, when Brown came out with that seemingly true story again. S. T. me last night. I felt it would be death to me if you had ever believed it, though against anyone else I could muster up my obstinacy. Before I knew Brown could disprove it I was for the moment miserable. When shall we pass a day alone? I have had a thousand kisses, for which with my whole soul I thank love, but if you should deny me the thousand and first, T would put me to the proof how great a misery I could live through. If you should ever carry your threat yesterday into execution, believe me T is not my pride. My vanity or any petty passion would torment me really T would hurt my heart I could not bear it. I have seen Mrs. Dilka this morning. She says she will come with me any fine day. Ever yours. John Keats. I hurt mine. To Fanny Braun. The 13th of October, 1819. 25, College Street. My dearest girl. This moment I have set myself to copy some verses out fair. I cannot proceed with any degree of content. I must write you a line or two and see if that will assist in dismissing you from my mind for ever so short a time. Upon my soul I can think of nothing else, the time is past when I had power to advise and warn you again. S. 
Tea the unpromising morning of my life, my love has made me selfish. I cannot exist without you, I am forgetful of everything but seeing you again, my life seems to stop there, I see no further. You have absorbed me. I have a sensation at the present moment as though I was dissolving, I should be exquisitely miserable without the hope of soon seeing you. I should be afraid to separate myself far from you. My sweet Fanny, will your heart never change? My love, will it? I have no limit now to my love, you know it came in just here, I cannot be happier away from you, tea is richer than an argosy of pearls. Do not threat me even in jest. I have been astonished that men could die martyrs for religion, I have shuddered at it, I shudder no more, I could be martyred for my religion, love is my religion, I could die for that, I could die for you. My creed is love and you are its only tenet, you have ravished me away by a power I cannot resist, and yet I could resist till I saw you, and even since I have seen you I have endeavoured often to reason against the reasons of my love. I can do that no more, the pain would be too great, my love is selfish, I cannot breathe without you. Yours forever. John Keats. February. 1820. My sweet love, I shall wait patiently till tomorrow before I see you, and in the meantime, if there is any need of such a thing, assure you by your beauty that whenever I have at any time written on a certain unpleasant subject, it has been with your welfare impressed upon my mind. How hurt I should have been had you ever acceded to what is, notwithstanding, very reasonable. How much the more do I love you from the general result? In my present state of health I feel too much separated from you and could almost speak to you in the words of Lorenzo's ghost to Isabella. Your beauty grows upon me and I feel a greater love through all my essence still. My greatest torment since I have known you has been the fear of you being a little inclined to the Cressid. But that suspicion I dismiss utterly and remain happy in the surety of your love, which I assure you is as much a wonder to me as a delight. Send me the words good night to put under my pillow. Dearest Fanny. Your affectionate. J.K. Last letter from John to Fanny. A thing of beauty. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness, but still will keep a bower quiet for us, and a sleep full of sweet dreams, and health, and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth. Of noble natures, of the gloomy days. Of all the unhealthy and o'er darkened ways. Made for our searching, yes, in spite of all. Some shape of beauty moves away the pall. From our dark spirits. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon. For simple sheep, and such are daffodils, with the green world they live in, and clear rills, that for themselves a cooling covert make. Gainst the hot season, the mid forest break. Rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms. And such too is the grandeur of the dooms. We have imagined for the mighty dead. All lovely tales that we have heard or read. An endless fountain of immortal drink. Pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. 
nor do we merely feel these essences. For one short hour, no, even as the trees that whisper round a temple become soon. Dear as the temple's self, so does the moon. The passion poesy, glories infinite. Haunt us till they become a cheering light. Unto our souls, and bound to us so fast. That, whether there be shine or gloom o'er our cast. They always must be with us, or we die. Therefore, tis with full happiness that I will trace the story of Endymion. The very music of the name has gone into my being, and each pleasant scene is growing fresh before me as the green of our own valleys, so I will begin. Now while I cannot hear the city's din, now while the early budders are just new, and run in mazes of the youngest hue, about old forests, while the willow trails, its delicate amber, and the dairy pails, bring home increase of milk, and, as the year, grows lush in juicy stalks, I'll smoothly steer, my little boat, for many quiet hours, with streams that deepen freshly into bowers. Many and many a verse I hope to write, before the days is, vermal rimmed and white. Hide in deep herbage, and ere yet the bees, hung about globes of clover and sweet peas. I must be near the middle of my story. Oh may no wintry season, bare and hoary. See it half finished, but let autumn bold. With universal tinge of sober gold. Be all about me when I make an end. And now at once, adventuresome, I send. My herald thought into a wilderness. There let its trumpet blow, and quickly dress. My uncertain path with green, that I may speed. Easily onward, thorough flowers and weed. John Keats Bright star Bright star, would I were steadfast as thou art. Not in lone splendor hung aloft the night. And watching, with eternal lids apart. Like nature's patient, sleepless eremite. The moving waters at their priest-like task. Of pure ablution round earth's human shores. Or gazing on the new soft fallen mask. Of snow upon the mountains and the moors. No yet still steadfast, still unchangeable. Pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast. To feel forever its soft fall and swell. Awake forever in a sweet unrest. Still, still to hear her tender taken breath. And so live ever or else swoon to death. John Keats Fragment Welcome joy, and welcome sorrow. Under the flag Of each his faction, they to battle bring Their embryo atoms Tilda Milton Welcome joy, and welcome sorrow. Lethe's weed and Hermes feather. Come today, and come tomorrow. I do love you both together. I love to mark sad faces in fair weather. And hear a merry laugh amid the thunder. Fair and foul I love together. Meadows sweet where flames are under and a giggle at a wonder. Visage sage at pantomime. Funeral, 
and steeple chime. Infant playing with a skull. Morning fair, and shipwrecked hull. Nightshade with the woodbine kissing. Serpents in red roses hissing. Cleopatra regal dressed. With the aspic at her breast. Dancing music, music sad. Both together, sane and mad. Muses bright and muses pale. Somber Saturn, Momus hail. Laugh and sigh, and laugh again. Oh the sweetness of the pain. Muses bright, and muses pale. Bear your faces of the veil. Let me see, and let me write. Of the day, and of the night. Both together, let me slake. All my thirst for sweet heartache. Let my bow be of you. Interwreathed with myrtles new. Pines and lime trees fall in bloom. And my couch a low grass tomb. John Keats, 